so a little more snow possible on Thursday, it sounds like. Right, could be coming down. And the question I have for Scott is, how do we really know that no two snowflakes are alike? <laughs> It's a great question. Because, because really, just, we can't know. They're all falling at the same time. Well, you know, it's one of those things. There's just infinite possibilities, Roland, but you're right. right. Uh, there's nobody out there examining every snowflake, mm -hmm. but the possibilities are there. They can be real close, but there's when those crystals come together, it's uh, pretty complex work there. So we want to talk about snow and snow formation and the temperature of snow, and that's what this question, the root of, is, of this question is from Cynthia Mann Elementary. Here's Sam. Hi, my name is Sam Sestokopo, and I go to Cynthia Man Elementary. And my other question is, does snow have to be a certain temperature? Excellent question. Does the snow have to be a certain temperature? And temperature is critical in the formation of snow. Whether it's wet snow that may be heavier and not as deep, dry snow that's fluffier, but that's the formation of the snow, the type of snow that falls is determined by the temperature of the snow where it forms. So let's first of all take a look at what we need for snow. We've got to get the cold air in place, then the warm air comes up on over it, and that air rises and cools, condenses, and the snow forms and it starts to fall. But what's the details of what's going on up there in the clouds? How does that snow fall? Again, this is a picture taken from locally here in Meridian uh, of snow that fell, I think, just after Christmas or New Year's. And these are called dendrites. This particular snowflake right here has to form with the temperatures between 3 and and 10 degrees above zero at different temperatures you get different types. So it's mostly a dendrites here and some, I think these are uh, some platelets here uh, as well. Let's take a look at the possibilities of what will fall. These are the snow crystal shapes. These are the dendrites. If the temperature is between 3 and 10 degrees, when a super cooled water droplet, that's water that's in the form of water below freezing, forms, uh, you'll then get the crystal growth that will make these dendrites. They're ice crystals that grow and come together. If it's between 10 and 14, you get these sector plates, columns between 14 and 21, little needles of ice crystals falling between 21 and 25, and when it's warmer, you get these thin platelets that come down, and sometimes you can get a mixture of both. And so basically, the supercooled water droplets are traveling up through the clouds, and then the ice crystals begin to form, depending on the temperatures, you get those certain types, and then they can cluster together as well as they fall, and if the temperatures are warm enough, you get those big snowflakes that start to fall. When you get that mild layer, the snowflakes start to cluster together. Many times, big snowflakes are a sign you're going to turn over to rain because of this mild la uh, layer being present. But the bottom line is that temperature is critical on how the snowflakes will form, what type of snow falls, and of course how much snow, well depending on the temperatures down here, the colder the temperature, those snowflakes can pile up a lot higher. That's the good news. The bad news she can't make snowballs and have a snowball fight out of it. <laughs> oh, that's, that's right. true. You need to know, Scott, that Roland's over here looking at that photograph taken by Scott and it, of all the snowflakes. That's right. There. Yeah. Scott McDaniel out of Meridian took that picture. Amazing. And, and Roland thought he saw two that looked exactly <laughs> looked alike. Exactly alike. Mm -hmm. Do you, where's, you get the ruler out there? You measure it? <laughs> <laughs> we'll send them out during Thursday when the snow <laughs> <Awesome. is. laughs> Coming up next on Fox 9 on your side, it was a surprise.